Now that we know what an imaginary number is, and also a complex number, we're going to look at how to add them, subtract them, multiply them and divide them. In other words, we're looking at the arithmetic for complex numbers. So first of all, the easy ones. Adding and subtracting of complex numbers, when they're written in Cartesian form, it's actually quite a simple extension of what we already do. Um, basically, it's just combining like terms, really, so it is exactly what we normally do. So in other words, what we do is we simply add or subtract whatever is indicated, the real parts, and add and subtract the imaginary parts of any given numbers that we have to add or subtract. And it's written quite neatly in this little box down here. So let's just say we've got one complex number, Z1, which is X plus IY. Remember, that's the real bit, and that's the imaginary bit. And another number, Z2, V plus IW. So that's the real bit is V, and the imaginary bit, W. So the idea is that to add the two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, we add their real parts, X and V, to give the new real part of the sum. And then we add the imaginary parts, W and Y, and they give us the imaginary part of our result as well. Subtraction is the same deal. X minus V, so we subtract the real parts in the correct order, and subtract the imaginary parts as well, also in the right order. So the order matters there, of course, just like it does in regular subtraction. So let's see what these examples are. The first one we've got there is a, an addition of Z plus W. So Z is 3 plus I, W is minus 2 minus 2I. So we've got A, Z plus W is, okay, here's our first number, and here's our second number. Just writing it out in full. So we've got to add the real parts, so that's those bits, and then we've got to add the imaginary parts. Remember there's a little 1 in there. So we're going to get 3 plus minus 2, it's going to be 1, and 1 plus minus 2 is minus 1, I. So we'll just pop that in there. The next one, B, we've got minus 1 plus 2I as the first number. Oh, there's three numbers in this one, 3 plus 4I, taking that away and then adding i at the end. So let's do it in order. I'll do the first one here. I've got minus 1, take away 3. If I subtract the real part, so that's minus 1, minus 3 is minus 4. Then I've got 2i and minus 4i, so it's 2 minus 4 is minus 2i. Then we still got that i sitting there on the end. It's basically just grouping them up now. So I've still got minus 4, minus 2i, plus 1i, is just minus i. So it really is just like doing algebra. It's just that you remember that i actually means the square root of minus 1. So that's basically how addition and subtraction go. Multiplication is a little bit harder, but not all that much. It's really just the distributive law, um, as well as remembering that i squared is minus 1. And that lets you simplify things. So the box here gives you a rule for it. I really wouldn't suggest remembering that. Uh, because really all you've got to do is remember the distributive law. So let me just show you how this rule is developed. So we've got here Z1 times Z2. They're our usual old general uh, complex numbers. X plus IY times V plus IW. So that's the result right here. But let's just ignore that for a moment. Let's do the distributive law. We'd go X times V. And then we'd go X times IW. And then we'd go iy times v, and then we go iy times iw, so that's i squared yw. So see what that gives us. We've got a real part, that's a real number, we've got a couple of imaginary numbers with the i's in them. This one here's got an i squared, so remember i squared is actually minus 1, so I'm going to cross that off, that's minus 1. And so that means we've there got minus yw, so that's actually a real number. So we've got two reals and two imaginaries, so that means we've got xv minus yw is the real part of the result, and then plus i outside of xw plus yv, the imaginary part of the result. It's exactly the same as that there in the rule, but that's how we get it. So it's just the distributive law on the numbers you start with, and remembering that i squared is minus 1, gives you your answer. Now when you've got real, you know, proper numbers in here like twos and threes and minus ones and so forth, it's much easier just to distribute it out than to actually try to remember this long rule. Okay, it gets a bit messy in your head. 
but really it's up to you, whichever you find the easiest. I just find distributing it easier myself. So let's try it with an example. We've got z times w. z is 3 plus i, w is minus 2 minus 2i. So we've got zw is 3 plus i minus 2 minus 2i. So my distributive law, I'm going to go 3 by minus 2 is minus 6. Then I've got 3 by minus 2i, so that's going to give me minus 6i. Then I've got i times minus 2, so that's minus 2i. And finally, i times minus 2i is going to be minus 2i squared. And of course we've got to remember that i squared is minus 1. So, so that, um, that last term there is just going to be minus 1 minus 2 multiplied together, sorry. So that's all going to become plus 2. Okay, so writing out our final result, we've got minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4. Minus 6i minus 2i is minus 8i. So that's our result when you multiply out z and w. We've got a real bit in the front, imaginary bit coming second. And you could have, if you wanted to, used that big rule there, but I just simply don't remember it, so I just expand it out using my usual laws. So the last one we're going to look at is, of course, division. And it's a little bit trickier again. Um, it involves this new idea called what we call a conjugate of a complex number. And that's no big deal. Uh, the conjugate's defined down here. It's just, well, if z is x plus iy, then z conjugate is x minus iy. You just change the sign on the imaginary bit. That's what a conjugate is. Uh, but that particular number is going to let us uh, get rid of any complex numbers from the bottom of a fraction. Uh, so it's kind of getting the complex numbers out of the fraction. Of course, to be able to do the division, what we're going to need to know how to do is multiply, add, and subtract. So we're using all the skills we've got so far in this video to finish off the division or a fraction with complex numbers in it. So let's check it out. In general, um, using our old general complex numbers, z1 is x plus i, y, z2 is v plus i, w, z1 divided by z2, or if you want written in fraction form. The idea is that we're going to get rid of the complex number from the bottom, z2, by multiplying it by its own conjugate. If we multiply the bottom by the conjugate, we have to multiply the top by it as well, otherwise we change what the, num the number actually is. So we're essentially multiplying here by, that's equal to 1. So we've got z2 bar over z2 bar. Now again, the result comes out looking like this. Big long thing was x, y, z's and w's. x, y's, w's and v's, I mean. And again, I don't remember it. I just remember that I need to multiply my fraction, top and bottom, by the conjugate, and then I get my result. So in, in general, the reason why this works is because no matter what the complex number is, let's see, z2, z2 is v plus iw, so z2 bar is v minus iw. No matter what those numbers v and w are, whenever you multiply z2 and z2's conjugate, you always get v squared plus iw, v minus iw, v, and then minus i squared, w squared. These two, of course, go away. i squared becomes a minus 1, so you're left with v squared plus w squared. That's always a real number. No matter what the complex number you're looking at, multiply it by its conjugate, you always get a real value. So that means this fraction up here always has a real number on the bottom. And that means we can just simplify everything and get a complex number in you know the usual real plus i imaginary part as the result. So let's see it by example just to check. We've got z on w. That's 2 minus 3i over negative 1 plus 2i. And remember we need the conjugate of the thing on the bottom. So w bar is going to be equal to minus 1 minus 2i. You only change the sign on the imaginary bit. Don't change the sign here. So that's w bar. So now we're going to have 2 minus 3i multiplied by w bar. So that's going to be minus 1 minus 2i. And on the bottom, we've got minus 1 plus 2i, minus 1 minus 2i. And now it's just a matter of doing the multiplications and cleaning everything up. So on the bottom, we've got minus 1 by minus 1 is 1. Then 
take away 2i, then plus 2i. Just like I was saying, that's always going to happen. They always knock each other out. And then you've got minus 4i squared. Remember, i squared is minus 1 times minus 4, so that's going to be plus 4. So we get 5 on the bottom. Now on the top, we're going to have 2 by minus 1 is minus 2. 2 by minus 2i is minus 4i. Minus 3i by minus 1 is plus 3i. And then it's going to be 6i squared. Remember, it's all over 5. That was our result there. Okay, so let's see. 6i squared, that's going to be minus 6, because i squared is minus 1. So minus 2, take 6, is minus 8. And then minus 4i plus 3i is minus i all over 5. That really is fine, but if you really want to write it in the correct form, the result should be minus 8 on 5, the real part, and then minus 1 on 5i for the imaginary part. So that there is our example for dividing two complex numbers. The idea being to get from a fraction with a complex number on top and bottom to a complex number written as real part plus imaginary part times i. So, finishing this one up, you can read the rest of that section if you are using the textbook. It should be finished now, so you can just check out the worksheet problems and also the problems from the text from 3.1. Before you go into the next video, something to think about. How might you find the square roots of imaginary and complex numbers? We'll deal with that later, but just have a think about it now. And as usual, write down any problems you might have.